Bam, as crazy as it is, you're 48 hours removed from the emotion of the highest point of the NBA season. You're two weeks removed as a team from free agency. you got a bunch of teammates on this team who go into free agency. What are your thoughts as far as wanting to keep it together, but also appreciating that it's a business and that things change, and you've seen so much of that really already in your in your five, six-plus years? Uh the goal is to win a championship and this organization do anything possible for that to happen. Uh, <clears throat> I feel like everybody in here knows it's a business uh, and that's why you cherish the moments you go through with, with your teammates, with your brothers, because you never know what can happen next year. You never know what can happen at the deadline. Uh, so for me, man, I just soak in all the, the good moments, the bad moments, the adversity, all of it. And, uh, you cherish it because at the end of the day, that's what makes brotherhood. Uh, you know, we've been through so much this year, and I feel like it's brought us closer as, as, as brothers. When when we talked to UD in Denver, and one of the questions that came up was, how did you know it was time finally to move on? And he was like, because guys get it now. And he mentioned you specifically. How, how much of, I mean, You'll do it your way, but how much of the UD role of being the guy in the room, how much of that are you looking to take on? Man. Uh, uh, big shoes to fill. Uh, definitely need a lot more championships. Uh, <clears throat> a lot more tattoos. Uh, <laughs> a lot more trash talking. Uh, but... I think he understands his role, and it's time for him to go. Uh, you know, he understands he uh, he has to shed this this chapter and uh, open a new one. Uh, I'm excited for that for him, but <clears throat> I don't think anybody can ever be another Udonis. You know, I think he'll be a one of one to walk through these halls and uh, be the guy who t- carried the torch, and uh, it'll only be one of him. So. For us, man, the best thing we can do is everything he's taught us, everything we've learned from him, uh, you share it in your own form, your own way, and uh, you just carry it in a, in a, in a different load. Spoiler just up here a few minutes ago talking about how unique the partnership is with you and Jimmy. Um, how do you feel like that partnership has evolved over the years, and, and what do you think makes – uh, you, you guys as a duo so unique and special? Uh, I think we're special just because we don't, we don't get into all the the analytics and the odds and this, that, and the third. I feel like when, when, when me and Jimmy step between those lines, it's competition and will. Uh, and that's as simple as you can make basketball. When it's competition and will, you it's either – our will is greater than yours or vice versa. And, you know, throughout these playoffs, throughout these runs in these last four years, you know, we willed our, willed our way through a lot of places, uh, through a lot of things, and a lot of people have doubted us. We've had 3% odds. We've had crazy predictions about our season. And somehow we still make a way and pave a way. So, you know, I feel like that's why it's special because you have two guys that are literally, you know, we're not the most skilled, we're not the most talented, uh, but we have a will and a competitive nature. Pam, there's, there's always been a lot of focus on your, your offense, and some of it's probably been unfair over the years, but with the way the, the offense did shift this year, how do you think you navigated finding the balance between your own scoring and your in the playmaking load that you've always handled, and then through the playoffs, do you feel like you found who you want to be as as a playoff offensive player? If that makes sense. Uh no, because I feel like I I still have uh I still have more to learn, more to grow with, uh, more development, you know, in all aspects of my game. Um, and also, me as a leader, uh, you know, like UD's gone, so somebody has to really step in that role and, and be the person in front to have those experiences and 
shed their opinions and tell guys how it's supposed to be, not how you think it's supposed to be, uh, <clears throat> and, and really be that the guy in the front. Um, you know, for me, this season has been none but ups and downs, but, you know, I was in there with 14 other guys who was willing to do anything. Uh, and, you know, to have those 14, it made my life easier. Uh, you don't listen to the outside noise about you should be doing this, you should be doing that. Uh, when you get in the locker room with 14 people you trust because uh, you see them every day for, well, how long has the season been at this point? Nine months? Uh, uh, you start to, their opinions matter more. Uh, so for me, man, you know, I still got growing to do. I still got a lot of development, but the 14, 14 other guys in that locker room made it comfortable with me for me to figure out what I can be and who I can be. Bam, in these last playoff runs, speaking of your partnership with you and Jimmy, you guys have been able to take away a lot of these teams' strengths and then obviously play to you guys' own strengths. What made the Nuggets, not only with Jokic and Murray, but the rest of the players, such a unique challenge with, you know, all the different coverages you guys threw out to kind of solve that? Uh, it's a different ball game with the Nuggets. Because uh, <clears throat> you have a guy who, who can pass like no other. Uh, and then you have somebody running off pick and rolls who can literally make almost any shot if you just uh, watch them in the finals. Uh, he made some of the most difficult shots in, in the finals. So for us, man, it was uh, – they made shots. Uh, you know, their will was greater than ours. Uh, <clears throat> they they get a definitely a uh, – a tip off hat for me, uh, just because I know how hard we play. You know, I know we're trying to win games in the mud, and they was willing to go to the mud and get those wins. So, you know, for me, they have the ultimate respect. Bam Spo was in here talking about you defensively, especially throughout this whole entire run. But I guess when you look back, and there's, I guess there's a way to track offensive improvements, but maybe not so as easy to do defensive. Do you feel like you're a different defender than you were a year ago? And if so, what are the slots that you feel you're, you're, you've learned or are different in? Man, just being smarter. Uh, uh, being a technician, really really locking into the details. Uh, you know, defense really about effort and knowing guys' tendencies. Uh, so for me, man, being able to know their plays, know where he's going, know where they're going to be at, know what's coming after a, a, a timeout. Uh <clears throat> And then also quarterbacking and having everybody in the right spots and communicating to people. Uh, it's a lot that goes on the defensive end that uh, a lot of people don't talk about. Uh, so for me, man, it's I do feel like I've become a better defender uh, just because learning angles, learning details, learning guys' tendencies have, have helped me along this way.